Hi, this is David from Electric Teaching, and this is part seven of my Starcatcher game. Um, we are going to add now, let's see, um, a way of um, running a collision so that when our player hits the target, we will have it just appear on the right hand side of the screen and later increment scores and uh, keep track of, uh, of how long it takes to do that with a timer. So for now, let's see, we need to start by putting in a, a true-false statement uh, for the target visibility. So I'm going to make a new variable here. I'm going to make a new variable. Um, let's do this right here, target visible equal true. Capital T, true, should turn purple. And now I'm going to... Uh, make an if statement saying only blit it if it's visible. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move um, a lot of things into the if statement so that it doesn't run anything it doesn't need to run if the target has already been caught or cat or caught. Yeah. So I'm going to come down here and we're going to. Let's see, I'm going to need to move a couple things into an if statement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some room below here. Um, we will still update it before we run the keyboard checks. So right here, we're going to run an if statement. So if target visible equals capital true. No, excuse me, if just target visible, you can do that, or equals true. In this case, if equals, uh, double equal true would have been working fine, but let's do it this way. If target visible, because that's either true or false, then we are going to, I'm sorry, change my mind. I like doing it this way. Again, I'm a teacher. I like to show it in full explanation of it. Then we're going to run the seconds in the incrementing. So I'm going to... Uh, cut it from there. We don't need it from up there anymore. I'm going to space this out and need a little more room. And now I'm going to put it in the if statement. Make sure it's tabbed correctly, indented correctly. And then we need to move the blitting of the target as well. And so that it runs it down there. And we will need to update the screen after this, so I will move this part to to below. There we go. Okay, so if true, if this is true, okay, um, we are going to run our seconds, increment our target position, blit it. Now, if it's false, meaning we've had a collision, then we need to do an else statement. So it's not true. Then we need to say else. Blit it to blit the target okay, to the width of the screen minus 50. To the width of the screen minus 50. So what this is, is puts it in a nice place in the lower right-hand corner. That's the x-coordinate. And the y-coordinate is um, height minus 50. And so that x-y-coordinate will blit it over there. <clears throat> that should work. All right, so down, way down at the bottom, we need to run our little test to see if we have it actually uh, are successfully in a near location with the player. So in the same if statements of where we're bouncing off the screen, we want it to check, are you in, within the area? Now to do this, I'm going to use an absolute value. That way, whether it's just slightly beyond, or slightly in front, or slightly left, or slightly right, um, we will get the absolute value of the difference. Um, if a target is on one uh, side of it, the answer could be negative. And if I say less than 20 pixels, well, a negative number is less than 20 pixels. 
So we need to do this by target position, x coordinate, which is the zero entry, minus the player position. Close the parentheses. If that distance, absolute value distance, is less than 20, and the y coordinate as well. y coordinates in the element 1. And if that's less than PY, excuse me, so, uh, distance with PY. So subtraction is a distance calculation. And we're going to make sure that that's also less than 20. Seems to be reasonable, about 20 pixels away either way. Then we are going to um, set the target visible to false. Capital F false. All right, let's see if this works. So I'm going to run it, save it, and run it. And, oh, got an error. I got an error. So it didn't like where I put it. It seemed like it had a problem there. Oh, I misspelled something. Let me come back to this screen. And it was in the else statement. You probably caught it. I'm sitting there telling me through the video screen. Save and run again. Whoops, wrong button. And let's see if I can go get that guy. That last time it just ran into me. Oh, all right, perfect. I have successfully collected it. I can run it again. Let's close it. Run it. And boy, this one's a faster one because of the random speed, but I collected it pretty quickly with my mouse movements. Okay, I'd like to show you how the width and height can be changed now. If I change this to 800 and to 600, every feature of the game should still work like it did before. Let me move this screen so you can see it. And it is still bouncing around, moving a little slow, and still working. I'm going to close it. This one was a pretty big screen, but let me show you the micro version here, 400 by 300 save and run it and everything still works the same i caught that guy pretty fast because the size of it but you get the idea save and whoops cancel and run it again if i can run this again you can see that it works i'll move around whoops try to collect it and there i think I, there it goes i collected it and everything still works the same I think I'm going to be using a different size screen now. I think I'll use, uh, let's do a 700 by 500. Save and run. Oh, that's perfect. Fits in the window nicely. So that's the one I'll be using for the rest of the little tutorial here and the little lessons. I hope you enjoyed this, this and uh, stay tuned for the next one. And the next one will be starting the idea of adding uh, multiple players with a scoreboard and coming up we will have a mouse movement con uh, control that the actual player.